Welcome guys. Today we will be exploring the copper cycle reactions in the lab. We've got some pretty standard materials that you would find in any lab. And we will be using some nitric acid, methanol, sulfuric acid, acetone, sodium hydroxide, zinc, and copper metal. We do have some safety precautions for this lab. Sodium hydroxide is toxic and corrosive and can cause burns. Same with sulfuric acid. Very dangerous stuff there. Uh, methanol is highly flammable and toxic. You really don't want to inhale those vapors. And as always, wear your PPE, lab coat, goggles, and your gloves throughout the entire portion of the lab. First thing you're going to want to do is take the mass of your evaporating dish. Make sure you record that in your lab notebook. Now we are going to measure out close to 0.5 grams of solid copper wire. And we are going to record that number as well. Make sure you do not forget this step. Next, as you can see, I'm putting on two layers of gloves. And this is just in case I get any nitric acid on my hands. I can take off the top layer of gloves and not worry about the acid seeping through to my skin. So I added the copper to a 250 mil beaker and I am going to measure out 5 mil of concentrated nitric acid and trying to get it as close as possible and then I'm going to add it to the 250 mil beaker and we'll see what happens so I went ahead and closed the hood because there is a red fuming gas coming from the reaction and as you can see the liquid has turned green and there is a red gas evolving from that reaction. Here's just a closer look. As you can see, all the copper has been dissolved from the nitric acid. Next, we're going to add 100 mils of deionized water to the reaction beaker. And we get this really pretty blue mixture there. Next we're going to add in 30 mils of 3 molar sodium hydroxide. Let's see what happens. We get a darker blue precipitate forming as you can see and it feels like a little gelatinous of interesting. Next I'm going to add a few boiling chips into the reaction beaker and we're just going to heat and see what happens. At this point it's probably a good idea to be thinking about what could possibly be happening in this reaction and maybe trying to come to some conclusions or at least some hypotheses about what you think is happening at this stage of the reaction. Alright, now we're going to remove the beaker from heat and add it onto some wire gauze and let it come to room temperature. Then we're going to put it into an ice bath and kind of let everything settle out. The solution on the top is pretty much clear, so we're going to go ahead and decant that. We're going to remove the liquid portion. And now we are going to add in 15 mils of 6 molar sulfuric acid. I went ahead and did that. And as you can see, kind of looks a little chunky, a little interesting. So we're going to give that a little stir. Now that the solution is turning clear, we can go ahead and kind of make an inference that the reaction is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and add some zinc metal.
That's about two grams of zinc metal going into the reaction beaker. If you look closely, you can see that there is gas evolution coming from the zinc metal. I'm gonna give it a little stir to see if I can kind of speed up the reaction a little bit. I am mashing the zinc, trying to get that to react a little bit quicker, and we'll see what happens. At this point, you may be noticing that there is a red solid forming within the beaker. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a stir and see if we can get a bit more of that red substance to come up. Next, we're going to place the beaker onto a hot plate and we are going to let the solution heat, not necessarily to boiling, allow it to cool and decant off the solution. This could also be a good time to think about what kind of reaction was happening at that stage. So next I'm going to transfer the solid into an evaporating dish, the one that I've already weighed out. I know the mass of that. So I'm going to transfer it with my scupula. And then the next stage says to rinse the solid with water in the evaporating dish, but I'm actually going to rinse it in my beaker so I can make sure that I got all of the solid out of the reaction beaker. Next, we're going to rinse the solid with portions of methanol and then one final time with a portion of 5 ml of acetone. And then we're also going to decant those off. Now we're going to place the dish on top of a water bath and let the solid dry a bit. Once it's dry, make sure you remove the boiling chips and then you can place it onto a wire gauze to cool to room temperature. Once it has cooled, place it on the balance and make sure you record the mass of both the solid and the evaporating dish together. And that's our final product. That's our copper.